Hello and welcome to MIP TV and with me is the man whose library is bigger than his house, I suspect, <laughs> from, from how many books he has, Mr. Bob Cook. So hi, Bob. And um, you've got a super book for us today, haven't you? Yeah, this is from uh, really one of the most well-known psychoanalysts, British psychoanalysts who's still alive. And I thought, what shall I have for number 31? This is book number 31. It is. Uh, the book I've just talked about in an earlier video about intuition was book number 30. So on to 31. And this person I went to see um, live, if you like, talking about um, supervision. Uh, what a wonderful person. He, I'm, he must be in his late 70s now. But anyway, the name of the book, and it was probably, if you went into psychotherapy school in the late 1980s, this book would be on the top of the list uh, for most training psychotherapy schools. And it's about supervision. Now, supervision in the late 1980s was a very, very early beginnings. Yes. So this, is a whole, with this book is a particularly um, wonderful one. It's very easy to read. It became a bestseller. It's by Patrick Casement, and it's called Learning from the Patient. So I'm guessing that the clue's in the name about this book, really. Learning from the patient. <laughs> yeah, learning from the patient. <laughs> I think you might be right, Rory. I think I think I might be right. Call me, call me, call me, you know, call me the person <laughs> with intuition, Bob. But yeah, learning, learning, learning from the patient. So, what does he kind of inform us about what what we learn from patients or clients? Okay, so let's put this in its in its context. So, in the nineteen eighties, supervision had. Uh, was really starting to be seen as its own discipline, um, but it was still very young. Um, people like, um, really people like Joan Wilmot and uh, Peter Hawkins and Robin Showart, mm. just written that wonderful book, Supervision and Health and Professions. So this was a, a young, this is a young discipline. So Patrick Caseman started to um, think about uh, you know, writing this book, he, I, I published it in 89, I think. And it's a series of um, vignettes um, from, I, I, you know, seven, eight, nine of his, his clients. And he talks about um, the real importance uh, for supervisors, yeah, uh, for supervisors be, to be able to, how can I explain this, to encourage their, their therapists, their supervisees, mm to bring along uh, notes, case studies of their clients and from the formulation of these, um, uh, uh, bring out supervision ideas, uh, because supervision is really about how to, how to help the therapist um, uh, utilize their best services for the client. Yes. That's what supervision is really about. So the young therapist, or even the more elderly therapist, will go to a supervisor, not only just to deal with their own anxieties, and, uh, but they will go there because they're stuck or because they want to talk about their fantasies around um, how to go forward with their clients. Um, uh, and it was in those early days that Patrick Caseman came from, and he said, right, bring your clients along. We'll, we'll look at them and we'll look at how things are going. Mm. If you're stuck, we'll explore that. Uh, and, and this book is, uh, is all about this, uh, and a wonderful book. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Everybody talks about, that, as you say, a wonderful book, um, you know, The Helping Professions, Supervision of Helping Professions by Short and Hawkins, or Hawkins and Short. Mm. Um, but there are lots of other ideas and models within supervision. And yeah. this idea of, of, of making a client formulation. It's like a dynamic in nature, yes. Yeah, yeah. And by doing that, kind of consolidating the, the, the supervisee, I guess, consolidates their thoughts and, and then it has a more concrete um, idea of what they bring into supervision. You know, they... Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And of course, one idea of Patrick Caseman's, which I think is a genius idea, and really I'd like to mention here, 
something I believe in very solidly. Um, it happens in the therapy world, certainly happens in the supervision world, and um, this is it. It's like um, what I would call the third eye perspective, and maybe mm. even Patrick in his book, but I don't remember, might have mentioned the same name, the third eye perspective. So it's the idea that um, you internalize your supervisor. Mm. Yes. And so when you're working with your clients, you have a third eye perspective with you. And the beginning therapist um, may take the internalized supervisor as a, as a whole in a way. Yes. But as they become more experienced, they integrate the internalized supervisor and um, bring in their own identity in as well. But you know, you know, Roy, how often, how often in your, your career, my career, uh, when we're stuck, we remember those words, those wonderful sayings from our internalized supervisor to help us through the difficult waters with our clients. Well, you know, it's really strange. I, I, I was supervising someone today, and that's exactly what came up. Oh. Um, that, that idea of the, the supervisee saying to me, um, I remembered you. I remembered what you you said, yeah, and yeah. and there's a classic example of that internal supervisor in, in in, yeah. in process. But there was also the other side of it, um, where the supervisee mentioned that they had then brought their own ideas in as well. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, they they not just taken what yeah. I said and regurgitated it. They 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 then consolidated that with their own yeah. thinking. You've got a third party perspective yeah. and you know that's the same in therapy if you want to look at it that way you know you come into therapy as you start to heal and do the work you carry the therapies therapist words with you under stress and integrating new healings in life and eventually your own in, your own identity comes in in the process as well and it's the same in child development but in this book is very good at uh, looking at that whole idea yeah well I, I think it's one of those books that if you're a supervisor in training you yeah. should really go and get I, I like the idea you know one of the things that i was always keen of when i when i taught was helping students develop that kind of third eye that internal supervisor we used to do a lesson on it and talk about it that i used to call them helicopter skills you'd be That's here right. That's and you'd be right. hovering above you know That's and um, and it, it was one of those where people said, I'm having enough trouble just doing this bit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but eventually it clicked and, and they could they could yeah. be in the relationship but also stand outside it and kind yeah. of critique it and, and, and kind of bring in ideas. In, really, really interesting and essential, I'd say, to be an effective oh, therapist. Oh, essential. How can you do therapy or counselling without a supervisor? Yeah. You'll be a C. Absolutely, yeah. you wouldn't know where you were and the client was. No, you'd no. have you'd have a symbiosis, a merged blob. Yes, and a, and and it, as we're using metaphors, a transferential Maya as well, probably. <laughs> oh, yes, certainly that. <laughs> yeah. certainly that. I yeah. mean, goodness gracious me. Yes. So, learning from the patient, Patrick Caseman. It is an old book. Uh, as always, we'll put a link in the in the comments bar below. You can click on it. Bob Bob doesn't uh, get paid for um, for talking about these books. This is purely um, Bob just talking about his his huge library of books and his wow. passion. And also, I'll put a little picture at the end of this video. So, hang on to the end, and we'll put a picture so you, you know what you you know what you're looking for. But there we go. Learning from the patient. Patrick Casement, and as always, Bob Cook, an absolute pleasure. Nice speaking to you as well, Roy.